Right, so I've just arrived in Leicester now to watch Leicester v West Ham on the last day of the season. We have to win to stay up and we've got to rely on Everton to drop points. Ideally, they lose to Bournemouth. Um, however, I'm not feeling, not feeling too confident ahead of this one. I uh, just looked at the team, pretty strong team, probably the team I would pick. Um, and West Ham have gone a lot weaker, so that's definitely in our favour. Surprised not to see Vardy starting is the only thing I'd probably say. Um, but yeah, I think we've got we've got a decent chance. However, I do, I do feel like Everton could potentially help us out. I mean, Bournemouth help us out by getting something at Everton. I could definitely see that happening. I'm more concerned about us actually getting three points today, which is what we need regardless of how Everton do. That's got to be our first we've just got to completely go for it today um, and we just haven't really seen that fight from Leicester through the last six eight weeks or I mean a lot longer really um, we saw a bit of a fight towards the game against Newcastle however I thought we should have gone for it a bit more in the last 20 minutes to keep it in our hands today um, and not have to worry about what's happening at Everton however we're constantly going to be we're checking our phones you're going to be seeing people on their phones constantly at the game um, and so we're going to know if what the score's like there, they're going to come up on the screen. So we'll kind of know if um, Bournemouth are going to help us out or not. But yeah, I feel like I'm going to do um, a bit of a summary at the end of this video. I wanted to kind of do this video to kind of, even if we do end up staying up, which like I say, I'm, I'm obviously trying to be optimistic, but it's hard to see that happening. With We have to rely on Everton. The fans are going to be up for it at the end of the day. They're playing a team like Bournemouth at the end of the day, who don't have that much quality and have nothing to play for. Similar to West Ham, however, West Ham, I'd say they've got more quality overall and they've got a cup final in a couple of weeks. Um, but having to rely on another team, it's never great going into a game where you where you have to win. Um, but yeah, I want to do a summary kind of, of Leicester this season and kind of the demise of the team who were Premier League champions 2016. So seven years ago, we, we lifted the title and um, Champions League, Europa League, FA Cup, we've won that too. A lot of special nights at Leicester that I've witnessed over the last few years. And um, it was after the Liverpool game where it really kind of hit home that I felt like this this could really be the end of it. And um, yeah, since then it's kind of, I feel like within the fan base, they've kind of come resound to the fact that we are going to get relegated and that's not a nice feeling. But unfortunately, the players have not lived up to the, their potential and behind the scenes, I don't think from top to bottom, literally top, who is the, the chairman of Leicester City, has not been, he's not been proactive enough. It's been very reactive and very, very very late when it comes to reacting. Rodgers should have gone a long time ago. And I do think Rodgers is to blame definitely a lot because his recruitment has been poor. I've not been too happy with how he's handled the media with stuff he said. Um, I don't think it's been good enough. It's not really been encouraging. Um, it just seems to be a complete mess behind the scenes. When we didn't sign any players in the summer, that was a massive alarm bells. Smeichel leaving with no replacement, a massive leader, no leaders in the club. Um, we've got Vardy, of course, Evans, but these players, at the end of the day, they try their best and they always have them for Leicester. You can never fault them on that front. However, they don't have the same quality that they once used to have. And um, our captain has been Tielemans, who has made it quite evidently clear that he doesn't want to be at the club. And this is almost certainly going to be his last game, even if we stay up. He's made it clear that he doesn't want to sign a new contract with Leicester. And this will be his last game. It's likely to be James Madison's last game as well. He has one year left on his contract. And even if we stay in the Premier League today, I'd be very surprised to see him in a Leicester shirt again. I think he would have signed a new contract by now if he wanted to stay. And at the end of the day, he's by far our best player. He should be playing at a team in the Champions League regularly. He's got far too much quality to be playing in the Championship or even in the bottom half of the Premier League. He deserves to be playing for a Championship club. So it's going to see, we're going to see quite a lot of farewells at the end of today. So that, that would be quite a shame, um, particularly if we do get relegated, because a lot of people are going to end up going home early. They're not going to be in a mood to, to cheer players off. At the end of the day, there's not going to be too much of a good feeling, even if we do win and we stay up because we haven't been good enough. And a club like Leicester, who are very disappointed, I think we finished 
eighth last season, which was one place off um, European football. We got to a, the Conference League semi-final and within the fan base, we were all very disappointed with that season. And to be 18th on the last day of the season is just not acceptable for a club like Leicester. We've, we've built a, a training ground worth £100 million. The squad we have and players just have not lifted up to the bill. When I look at that team on paper today, we've got some world-class, maybe not world-class, but Madison, Tielemans. These players have a lot of quality and um, we shouldn't be in this position at all, especially when you see clubs like Bournemouth, Brighton, Brentford. They, they, they don't have the same quality as, as Wolves. Like These teams are nowhere near on paper. I know it's only on paper, but we shouldn't be in this position whatsoever. So, yeah, well, I'm going to walk down to the ground now. I, I'm not really, I probably won't really vlog the game because I don't really like doing that. Um, but I'm going to give a summary of the game, how I feel afterwards, because I feel like I will feel quite emotional despite losing a lot of my interest um, in Leicester this season. I feel like I'm going to be quite emotional if I see Leicester go down because after the last few years, I think it would be, it's such a shame to see this happen to such a special club that has a special place in my heart and a lot of hearts of, the whole footballing world for what we've achieved it's a special unique story that can only be written by a club like Leicester so to see the demise it is, is a real shame so I'll give my thoughts quite I'll, I'll after the game I'll come straight back in the car and, and record a video for you and um yeah maybe I'll do one on, on Monday when I've kind of had some time to really think about things whatever happens and um kind of give a more rational logical view of things but yeah, going to go down to the game and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Hopefully Leicester can pull something out of the bag and um, come on you cherries. Hope Bournemouth can help us out for this one. So I'm just back now from watching Leicester and they have officially been relegated to the championship. Managed to win the game 2-1 against West Ham, 2-0 up as well. However, um, Everton did beat Bournemouth. So that has meant that we've been relegated from the Premier League after nine years I think uh, seven years ago won the championship in the Premier League um, so yeah it's been an absolute fall from grace uh, initial reaction it's absolutely gutting really to, um, to see that after all those years all the memories kind of all my childhood growing up seeing seeing the Premier League win seeing European football constant Premier League football really I can't really remember the days of championship football it being so long I was only around um, I can't even remember I probably would have been about 12 years old when we were in the last in the championship and after all the progress the club has made to be relegated back to the championship after these years is uh, extremely disappointing to say the least and I don't really want to reflect too much on the game because at the end of the day we didn't even play bad at all and that's the most frustrating things that I'm sure a lot of Leicester fans will agree with me that if we played like that for the whole 38 games then we wouldn't have been relegated. I think we lost 23 games out of 38 games which is complete relegation form. Um, lost to the bottom side Southampton six points which would have just kept us up quite easily if we won those two games um, and it's just not been good enough like I said at the start of the video it, from the top to the bottom of the club there's not one person's fault it has to be blamed right at the board and the owner who was not invested in the money not invested in the squad uh, Brendan Rodgers before he got sacked did not do a um, a good enough job and he seems like he fell out with a lot of the players and potentially the board who who really knows what went on behind the scenes but it wasn't good enough from him it wasn't good enough from the players they didn't show that fight like they did today and they did against Newcastle the game before it was just too little too late and it seemed as though when when they felt like the pressure wasn't on um, when Everton in the ground you could tell that Everton were winning it seemed like the players had a lot more confidence, which is just seems to be the case with these Leicester players. They seem to find that when it when it's needed the least, and they've just not needed it, and they've not had it in the crucial moments. And they've had so many opportunities. Well, if we just won a few games, particularly that game at Everton, 
we had at home a few weeks ago where we um, drew one all and uh, oh, two all and Madison um, missed a penalty just before half time which would have sent the game three one and I think we would have been saying I would have been saying something completely different today had that penalty gone in and I feel like the game would have been completely different however it didn't and things could have all been very different who knows maybe we would have still been relegated but we'll never know um but there's there was too many mistakes in the team um from like top to bottom it needs complete rebuild uh the club so many players out of contract no one knows who the manager's going to be Clearly, there's um, a lot of confusion within the board when it comes to recruiting managers, players, making key decisions, when to sack the manager. Obviously, I do believe I said Rogers should have gone a long time ago. I believe he probably should have gone over a year ago and he was kept in his job and it didn't really make any sense. All the players seem to have kind of gone against him. The fans, 90% of the fans wanted him out and it made no sense and we made the decision too late, employed someone the quality of Dean Smith who's he's done an okay job um I'm sh I wouldn't have thought he'll be there next season uh but he's not the level that Leicester should be looking at and for anyone even to come in with about I think he had six seven games left to kind of save the season to do that for any manager even best managers in the world Guardiola it's very difficult especially such a deflated squad with no confidence so yeah i feel like my initial reaction i've been quite calm because honestly i'm i can't say i'm actually that emotionally invested because i've been so so disappointed with uh leicester this season seeing the demise of them yeah it's just been disappointing and i i've, I've really struggled to keep interest i've lost a lot of interest and um i won't be there next season i made this decision before before we got relegated because i gave away my season ticket for the second half of the season to my friend because i didn't want to go anymore because i was really not enjoying the football and i i didn't like what i saw and i felt like it was wasting my time and overall i fell out of love with football in general quite a lot um but after seeing that it's very disappointing to see my club being relegated um but yeah i'll do um i'll do a review of uh, maybe more in depth of what's gone wrong at Leicester tomorrow and get that video out. But initial reaction is just, it wasn't good enough all season. Today, yes, we played pretty well. And if we played like that, we would have stayed up, but we can't just rely on results like we tried to with um, Bournemouth. Unfortunately, Bournemouth couldn't help us out, but that's not their responsibility. Um, if we just won a few more games, we wouldn't have been in this position and we should have easily done that if we played as we did today but we didn't and Leicester have now been relegated as Everton won 1-0 so yeah I'll see you um, tomorrow when I do a full review on what's going wrong at Leicester. It's the day after seeing Leicester being relegated from the Premier League to the Championship. Seven years after winning the Premier League the Foxes have been relegated to the Championship after quite frankly an awful season. This is a very different video to the type of videos that I usually make, my self-improvement content. However, I've been following Leicester for a long time, been a lifetime fan. And to kind of see the fall of such a special club for a lot of people, even not being a Leicester fan, I think a lot of people seeing the story of Leicester's rise from mediocrity to... Premier League champions competing in Europe, even some say getting up there with the big six in the Premier League. To see this fall from grace has been quite astonishing, really. And even as a fan myself, seeing the downfall, following it, going to games every single week, I'm still shocked today that we have actually been relegated to the Championship. So, in this video, I'm going to talk you through how exactly how this happened. And why this happened? What is the case? Because I don't think there's just one person, individual, or the players, the manager, the board. It's not just one element of that that has got Leicester in this mess. And it is not just this season, which is the reason why I've been relegated. And I think a lot of Leicester fans will all agree with me that this has been a long time coming over the last 18 months or so. Um... But let's roll it back to where it all started. So for me, 
where it all started for Leicester's downfall was probably quite obviously the Forest game in the FA Cup, which was around January time, February time of 2022, uh, when the club faced the then Championship side and arch rival Nottingham Forest. If you're from if you know England, Leicester and Nottingham is about 20 miles or so, 30 miles. It's quite a big rivalry. Um, and they hadn't played each other for a long time. Leicester been in the Premier League for a long time. Um, nine years or so, Forrest had not been in the Premier League for a long time, not in my lifetime. So it was a big game. Uh, Forrest been doing really well in the Championship at the time. Leicester, very hit and miss in the Premier League this season. Last season, obviously. Um, and yeah, Forrest ended up winning this game 4-1. And for me, that was when it all started. I saw the downfall. Even a few games before this, I thought something was not right. Um, Rogers seemed to be... His time seemed to be up, I felt. But I spoke to a lot of people in the club and thought he deserved a bit more time. But I always think once a manager has kind of... He's kind of lost the support of certain members of the fan base, which it was evidently clear he had and the squad had kind of lost faith in him and maybe the board potentially to some members most likely with the results and the football we were playing was not good enough it is always best to act quite promptly and be proactive because <laughs> you have seen the situation it has got Leicester in relegated to the championship so this was very disappointing however in 2021 to 2022, the club still managed to finish 8th in the Premier League and secured a Europa Conference League semi-final, which on paper sounds great, really. Especially you think a club that's just been relegated to the Championship the season before, they were 8th in the top division and in the European semi-final. However, there's a bit of context to this. So the club played in the Europa League, which if you're not too familiar with how the football kind of European works, you have the Champions League, which is where the best clubs in the world, the likes of Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, these types of clubs are in the top level, which Leicester did compete in once they won the Premier League, they were automatically put in the top four in the Premier League, goes into the Champions League. Uh, and then the two spaces below fourth to sixth, fifth and sixth, here in the Europa League, Leicester finished fifth in the two seasons previously to 21-22. Um, so they were in the Europa League and they performed very poorly. They didn't have a too tough of a group, to be honest. They played Napoli, who were a decent side. Um, but Spartak Moscow and Legia Warsaw, I think, were the other two sides, have a few poor results. results left them third in that group, which... They probably should have won, really, and it wasn't. They should have easily come second behind Napoli at, at worst, really. However, third, which secured them a, f a place in the um, in the qualifying rounds of the Conference League, um, which was very disappointing. I think a lot of Leicester fans, even that was probably the start, maybe, of where uh, some Leicester fans were like, "This isn't good enough," and I thought that at the time too. However, things were still looking all right we're still in europe the premier league was all right maybe an outside chance of uh, european football still and i think at the end of that season maybe some fans outside of leicester would be like well you've got to be a bit grateful like leicester are not a massive club or anything like this and they've finished eighth in the premier league however after seeing leicester finish fifth two times in a row securing a fa cup playing in europe a community shield and by the way, these two fifth place finishes should have both been fourth place finishes. Um, a lot of bottling, so to speak, in the last few games of both seasons, which caused Leicester to finish fifth. It was quite disappointing to see that regardless of how big of a club you think Leicester are or a similar type of club, I think you should always have that ambition. And when you've been playing so well recently, over the last couple of years and you see the potential in the side like Leicester with the players they have the infrastructure behind the scenes yeah I think a lot of Leicester fans will agree with me that that was not really good enough but to then go on the following season and yesterday be relegated I don't think <laughs> I don't think anyone would have pictured that whatsoever even a few months ago I don't think it really hit home till till around March April time 
But this this was only the start at the end of the season of 22. So then we have the summer, which we have in in all football, in European football, you basically have from the end of the season, end of May, June time till end of August, you have the transfer window where you're able to sell and buy players. And in this window, Leicester didn't sign anyone up until a few days before the end of the window where their star defender, a very young, talented prospect in Wesley Fofana, decided to hand in a transfer request and basically forced a move through to Chelsea. The club then replaced him with, uh, not to be unfair to the guy, he's been okay for Leicester, but a very mediocre replacement in Woot phase, playing in an average kind of uh, French side, I think it was Rems, Rems or Rems, I don't know what it's called, something like that. Um, and also a big player for the club, Casper Michael, the club captain, who anyone in football will be familiar with, been with Leicester for a long time, was there, lifted the trophy, the FA Cup, was the title winning goalkeeper, seen it all with Leicester, got promoted from the championship, left the club and was not replaced, which was criminal I think I don't know how he was not replaced we had the backup goalkeeper of Danny Ward who never looked good enough to be in the Premier League um, and his performances in the Premier League definitely back that up I'm sure any Leicester fan can vouch for me here he is not a Premier League keeper I don't think he's even good enough for the championship particularly what we saw in the first couple of months from him it was not good enough so we went into the season at the start of 22 with a significantly reduced squad when it came to quality and not just quality leadership, losing our captain and not replacing him and the quality of the keeper, which is such a big position. Yeah, was not good enough. And the manager, Brendan Rogers, made it very clear at the time that he was not happy with this. He wanted big money spent. He expected money to be spent this summer and it was not there. I'll speak a lot more about Rodgers and his role in this because he definitely has had a big role in, in Leicester being relegated in the fall, fall that we've witnessed over the last 18 months. He definitely shouldn't shouldn't be not seen as kind of a culprit in this because he has not been good enough. Um, so going into this season, it was set up for a very poor season. <coughs> Sorry. Um However, there was still a lot of talented players. We still had the likes of Yuri Tielemans, James Madison, Johnny Evans, Vardy. And some these players are all very experienced. They played at the top level. Leicester went on to pick up one point from their opening seven fixtures, which was absolutely abysmal. A few thrashes in there. I think there was a there was a 5-2 to Brighton and then a 6-1, I think, or something, to to Tottenham which I don't know how Rodgers kept his job, which was then followed up um, when we played Forest again, our arch rivals, for the first time in the Premier League. Big occasion, especially after the result. And I think Rodgers' job was probably on the line. If we did lose that, I think he probably would have gone there and then. However, we did end up winning that game 4-1, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and then we had a couple of more inconsistent results. And then we, I think we went on to win about five out of our six games before we had the World Cup break in Qatar, which was unusual. We've never had a World Cup break in football like this before. And this really seemed to disrupt the rhythm and uh, flow. The good, the good results that we finally saw from Leicester after this poor time and it was followed by five winless games, I think, in the new year, if I, if I got that correct. Um, we played Liverpool, Newcastle, Fulham, and it was just it just seemed to go completely fat, flat. And then finally, January transfer window opened. So again, like summer, but you just get one month to sign and sell players. It's normally not as busy as the summer. Most, most teams only do business in the summer. However, it was evidently clear that we were in a relegation battle now and new signings were needed, new fresh faces, people with a bit more energy who wanted to fight for this club were needed. And they were brought in in the form of Harry Suter, Victor Christensen, Tete on loan, and almost there was Jack Harrison who was meant to join on deadline day. However, that one fell through. And there was a lot more optimism around the club. The club went on to win a couple of consecutive games. I think we had Villa away and we won that one. I think it was 3-2. Tete looked outstanding. We had Spurs at home. Big 4-1 win. 
And I remember being at that game and that was probably the only game, I'm not going to lie, that was probably the only game this season that I've actually enjoyed. And the only game where it seemed like the fans were really optimistic and it just felt like a good place to be. It felt really nice during that game and I've not felt like that at all during this season. Hence why I decided to to give my season ticket to my friend for the rest of the season um, before this. I think it was around the start of the new year. I remember, I think it was after the Fulham game, we were just abysmal. And I was thinking to myself, like, I, I love Leicester and I, I always will follow them, but this this is not making me happy. It's not making me feel good. Uh, it's not good enough. I don't want to waste my time watching something that doesn't make me happy. It's making me miserable. I don't think... I didn't want to so my friend agreed to pay me a bit of money for the rest of the season I was happy I still went to a few games like I did go to the last game yesterday and I went to a few of the other games against Everton and I can't even remember Arsenal I think we played two and a couple of other teams before the end of the season but I think a lot of Leicester fans will agree with me that it just it just wasn't good enough from from the get go and yeah, I I think the atmosphere around the club, for one reason or another, was not good enough. And it was so then, yeah, we we were hitting around March, April time, looking in in big trouble now. And around the start of April, we played Crystal Palace. I was away at this point, but I watched the game on the first of April. We played Palace one nil up. And then we end up losing the game 2-1, last kick of the game. And this was Brendan Rodgers' last game in charge of the club. He was he was sacked the following day. Um, and I remember I was watching the game with my dad and we were both like, oh, shit, we're in trouble now. It hadn't really hit home. that Even though you, you did see it, but you just think, like, we've got enough quality to, to beat these teams, but we it really came clear and then we went on to two winless games without a manager the club clearly had no strategy in place there was no real urgency they clearly didn't really want to part ways with Rogers for one reason or another most likely financially because I heard he had a big um, payoff around 12 million or so to get, get him out of the club but at the end of the day they did it anyway so they should have just acted on this way earlier and I'm sure he wouldn't have been relegated yesterday but we'll talk a lot about the board in a bit because I think they, they have to hold their hands up for a lot of this. However, we we brought in Dean Smith, the former Aston Villa manager, with about seven games to go. And there was a feeling that he was a safe pair of hands. He would kind of steady the ship, might sort her out defensively. John Terry, a former Chelsea and England defender, came in, sort the defence out a bit. We had... Compared to the other teams, Leeds, Everton and Bournemouth, who we were competing with for to stay up, really, I think on paper, if you asked all these sides, um, and in, us included, we would say we had the best chance of staying up. We had the easiest running. We still had to play um, Everton and Leeds, and we had a couple of other games like Fulham and obviously West Ham yesterday, which seemed games that we could definitely target uh, and get and get a few wins there however it was the big games Leeds Everton Fulham and Bournemouth previously at home like you should be winning these games Leeds and Everton who we were fighting for their lives in a very similar position obviously Everton ended up staying up we only got points in these games two draws um, and then we got had an awful performance I didn't actually watch this one but Fulham we lost five three hours away for that game um, and I heard it was awful. It seemed like there was a lot of belief kind of sucked out of the the players that that day. And then yeah, it was it was followed by a home defeat with two games left to Liverpool. We lost three 0 and we just did not look good enough. And it was at that point where I was like, we're going to get relegated. I didn't really want to admit it before. I thought something could happen and we were kind of relying on on maybe Everton and Forest thought they'd probably fuck up a bit more than they did but they 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 were picking up points i think the week before Everton and Forest both both won their games so we then followed up just before the last game last week against Newcastle with an unlikely point against a Champions League bound side 
Uh, however, this this left it out of our hands yesterday when we went to play West Ham with Everton being 17th, two points ahead of us. And we need, if we were to win against Newcastle, that game which we did draw, and we never really went for it at any point, um, we would have had it in our own hands yesterday. And obviously if the results we did win and win like we did then we would have stayed up and but so that was a big kind of game we didn't go for it at all and I think we were lucky to get a point even if we went for it I don't know it's all ifs but swings and roundabouts so that that's what's happened over the last year 18 months if you're not too familiar with Leicester then this might have been kind of interesting to hear kind of my thoughts and how it's happened and when it actually all started but if you're a Leicester fan You've probably heard this a million times and you can understand and pick the bones out of everything I've said and you probably agree with everything. I think the feeling around the club is very similar from all the fans. So I'm going to talk about why has this happened now. I think there's three key key reasons why this has happened and there's not, like I said at the start of the video, it's not to point the finger at one individual, one group of of the players or the board or Brendan Rodgers so I'm going to talk about all three of them and I'm going to start with the players and I think the players they definitely have to take responsibility I would probably say they take about should take around 15% of the blame the squad on paper obviously on paper yes we talk about this a lot it's all in hindsight and a lot of things can happen on the day but that squad should be nowhere near the relegation zone despite the lack of investment in the summer you see clubs like Bournemouth, Brentford, Fulham like these teams all of the teams that stayed up Bournemouth, Fulham and Forest who came up last season all stayed up Forest yes spent a lot of money um, but still on, they don't have a good enough squad compared to us and yeah it just the players just didn't seem to be up for the fight at the end of the day and there's a major issue within the club that a lot of these players contracts were running out i think it was widely expected that yuri tillemans would leave in the summer of 22 however that never happened nothing materialized for him and he will end up leaving on a free this summer as well as the likes of Kaglos Yunku, Johnny Evans, a few fl fringe players such as Dan Almaty and um, Ryan Bertrand, Perez. A few of these types of players and are going for a free and the likes of Yunku and Tielemans who could have been sold for 40, 50 million pounds three years ago when we were two years ago even when we were playing European football and all the clubs were speaking so highly of them and of Leicester's recruitment. It's been widely spoken about of how good Leicester's recruitment has been. However, it has not been the case. But again, I'll get on to a bit more about recruitment later on. Yuri Tielemans, he made that very clear that he was not going to sign a new contract with the club and that he wanted to leave in last summer, really. He made it very clear to the fans that he was not going to sign and I think that kind of got... The fans weren't too happy when he was captain for a lot of the games, and quite rightly, when you don't really have, when you have someone who has made it so clear that he doesn't want to be there, he is you don't want him to lead your team out in a relegation fight. He's not going to have the same hunger and fight as someone who's maybe been at the club a long time, will stay regardless, and got a bit of a backbone about them. I'm not saying that Tielemans is does not that, or he wasn't up for the fight. He didn't try his hardest, but. Yeah, I don't think it's the best thing to do to have to make someone who wants to leave your captain of your club when the relegation big games. But this kind of links on to another key issue that Leicester had, which was the lack of le <coughs> sorry the lack of leaders at the club. So when Casper left, who was a club captain and he was part of the old guard, who won the league, he saw it, he kept us up in the first season in the Premier League we had Johnny Evans and Jamie Vardy who are big characters and a lot of experience however they were not playing as much Evans heavily injured nowadays and he's a lot older and same with Vardy he's not got the legs anymore however these players who would play ordinarily and will always fight for for the club as much as they possibly can we're not able to be called upon and it just felt that the players just capitulated with the lack of leadership from 
the managers too from from Brendan Rodgers, which we'll get onto. The fight for the badge for the club was not there, and I think when I saw Everton come come to play to Leicester a few weeks ago. I just saw the hunger. I saw a lot of players that were fighting for the club. They they were, they knew their futures were on the line. They wanted it a lot more than us, and they probably should have won that game. I'm not going to lie. They looked better than us. They, they they kept going, and they 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 stayed dogged, resilient. They don't have a good squad. Their squad. I'm sure Everton fans, if there's any of you watching me, um, probably not, <laughs> but it will agree that. Everton's squad is not as good as Leicester's but they wanted it more and that's what it comes down to especially in a relegation dogfight um, so I think it's fair to to say that a lot of the players kind of could see that we were sleepwalking to the championship but they, they didn't have the leaders there and maybe that they just didn't really see their long-term future being at Leicester and this had, did have an impact on the results I think leadership is so key in in a sports team and like I say it wasn't there and that has really really like dented our season and had a major impact and it will impact us again next season in the championship if if leaders are not brought in because it's so important Next, we'll get on to Brendan Rodgers, who was the manager of Leicester City for around four years. I think he's one of our longest serving managers. So Brendan Rodgers, I will give my hat off to him. He's a great man manager and he's done a great job for the club. He he guided us to the FA Cup win in 2020, I think. I think that's right. And two fifth place finishes, which should have been fourth, which partly to blame for him I'd say too but overall he's been a great manager for Leicester however it ended a bit sour for him he was very he was very negative in in his press conferences and you could tell he'd not had his own way when it comes to recruitment getting what he wants maybe he threw throws a few players out key players like Soyuncu came in for the last few games for Dean Smith and um, yeah he seemed to cause a few fallings out and quite rightly, I'd say that he didn't get the players that he wanted in the summer because we saw his um, recruitment in 2021. He brought in the likes of Dakar, Samare, Vestergaard, Ryan Bertrand for a combined total of 80 million plus. And none of these players were very good and he didn't really use them that much anyway, particularly in their first season. Obviously, I understand that a few of these were coming to a new country. They're not played before. But I don't think he did a great job and his recruitment, a lot of, I know a few Liverpool fans who I've spoke to have said that his recruitment is not great and that definitely proved dividends in um, the, the last kind of year or so at the club. But I think he does have to take a big deal of the blame. I'd probably say around a 30%, 35% if we give him the players 50, in which you can probably work out where the other 50% is going. But at the end of the day, Rogers, I still believe, is a good manager. Uh, maybe not as good as he makes out, but a top-level manager should prove that he can work with what he's got at his disposal, which he still had a good quality players, uh, and he just didn't seem to get the best out of them. I think his attitude to the media transmitted to the players and to the fans too and to publicly call out players freeze players out moaning and being negative in the press conference is never going to help anyone and I think that definitely has again had a big effect on the club and is a reason why I've been relegated his credibility as a manager has definitely declined significantly this was a guy who was linked heavily with the likes of Arsenal and Tottenham and even Man City potentially and I think he's got quite a big ego if if you know Brendan Rodgers he thinks he should be at the top level and at the end of the day now I think his credibility is completely down the drain after this season with Leicester and that's that is his fault and I think he'll be lucky to get a job at somewhere like Fulham or Bournemouth for kind of a mid-table lower Premier League club I think he's still got obviously some credibility and I'm sure he'll still get a Premier League job but the types of jobs that he once would have got, the likes of previously mentioned, Arsenal, Tottenham, I don't think they'll be looking at someone like Brendan Rodgers after that. I think they'll have better options. And finally, I'm going to go on to the board. And as mentioned, I think they take around 50% of the blame in the in the 
club's demise. And at the end of the day, the board and specifically the owner, Kuntop, has to take massive responsibility for the club's downfall. He is in charge of making the big decisions at the club. He's in charge of the manager. He's in charge of recruitment. To, he makes the final say on, on, on kind of giving the green light. Obviously, Rogers and the recruitment team will have their say too. Um, but it was so evidently clear that Brendan Rogers should have been sacked a long time ago. And that's Kuntop's responsibility as well as the board members that have their say. And they clearly just didn't act. There was very slow and recruitment was awful and the squad just desperately needed refreshing and yes Rogers was not good enough with his recruitment but at the end of the day when you saw the squad that we had last season and it wasn't good enough and we didn't live up to expectations what do you expect is going to happen when you have a, a weakened squad losing your top talent in Worthley for final losing a leader a legend at the club in Casper Smichael it's obviously going to get worse and I could see this happening but and I, I think all the fans did too but the board just seemed to be blind and just hoped for the best and this is what's happened and a lack of action is what's led to Leicester being in the championship having a hundred million pound training ground they spent a lot of money and time and effort into building this training ground and put plans into making the ground bigger all for what if you don't have your squad if your squad's not good enough to stay in the Premier League, it's all immaterial having the fancy training ground in the nice stadium with an expansion when you can't even sell the tickets anyway. Um, but yeah, th we've got now a squad that is significantly weaker um, when all the players that are going to leave because of the contracts that I mentioned and also the fact that we are in the Championship. Players like James Madison, who only has a year left, who would probably have left even if we stayed up will be gone, as, as well as a few other kind of players in the first team, maybe Castagna and Didi. I, I don't really know who else, because I don't really think anyone's been that good, and I don't think we'll miss them too much. Um, no manager in place. Dean Smith is unlikely to continue, I'd imagine. I don't think he's really long-term. It doesn't seem that way. I don't think he's really good enough to get us straight back into the Premier League, which has to be the only only goal it has to be 100% focused positions at the board need to be looked at and under immense scrutiny and probably amended with recruitment and who's making the big decisions when it comes to managers and just taking so long and being just reactive instead of proactive we need to get a new manager who's hungry and has kind of a bit of drive and ambition to really like excel you look at someone like Burnley who got relegated from the Premier League in 21-22 and they hired a young manager in Vincent Company and replaced their squad. A lot of their key players who moved on to other Premier League clubs and they were kind of completely changed their squad up and that's kind of the model. I would go for someone along the lines of Graham Potter. I think he's a great manager. I'm not too sure if he would come. Some people might think that's unrealistic. However, he lost his job at Chelsea a few months ago. Um, so he might not want to see, he might not have the kind of humility to step down to a championship. He might think that's kind of below him. However, if he wants to prove himself as a manager, then Brett Graham, if you're watching this, come to Leicester and prove yourself. We need you. Um, but the club has to decide quickly and they have to be up for the fight in the championship because it's a long slog. It's 46 games, which is eight more than the Premier League season. And yeah. They'll have some very tough challenges as Leeds and Southampton also went down who will be looking to bounce straight back. There's also been some good teams in the championship who failed to come up like some Middlesbrough, Coventry pushed Luton all the way to the uh, penalties. Uh, even the clubs like Ipswich who just came up from League One, I think they could be up there. Sunderland, West Brom, Norwich, Watford. These clubs have been in the Premier League and they still have some decent players in there are going to be looking and they'll think maybe they can pick three points off Leicester so yeah that that's um that's been my summary of the demise kind of a Leicester City what's gone wrong and what I would do next if I was in charge it's a very different type of video to what I'm usually make but I hope you found it really interesting even if you're not too interested in Leicester or maybe football 
it's a very interesting story and I'm very sad to see it come to an end honestly um, I have fell out of love with football somewhat but Leicester always has a very special place in my heart for what has happened over the last few years and I will always be a Leicester fan but I'm very sad and, and disappointed in my club and how things have gone over the last 18 months or so but this happens and I truly hope that the club just bounces back and really picks itself up but time will tell but let me know where you think it all went wrong for Leicester and where you think Leicester should go next in terms of players, recruitment, manager, everything behind the scenes because there's a lot of work to do over the summer and work has to start and preparations for the championship immediately. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.